Hodl Hodl is a platform best known for peer-to-peer non-KYC Bitcoin buying and selling. However, they also have a lending platform in which you can use your Bitcoin as collateral to receive US dollar denominated loans in the form of stable coins. Today, we're going to take a look at how the Lend platform works, uh, why somebody may want to use it, and the benefits and trade-offs of using something like it, as well as any risks associated with peer-to-peer -peer lending. I am Ben with the BTC Sessions. This is your daily session. Hodl the Bitcoin. First up, I just want to let you guys know, of course, HODL HODL is a sponsor of the show. If you're a regular watcher, you will know that. Um, and I typically talk about their peer-to-peer -peer Bitcoin trading. So you're able to get your hands on non-KYC sats that way. Anyways, I won't talk too much about HODL HODL right now because we're going to be doing a tutorial on them. But if you're interested in checking them out, then there will be a link in the show notes down below where you can sign up and uh, use either the peer-to-peer Bitcoin non-KYC, or you can check out, of course, the Lend platform that we're going to talk about. Uh, but shout out to other sponsors of the show, CoinKite.com. If you are looking to secure your Bitcoin with some of the best hardware on the market, CoinKite cannot be beat. I love my cold card Mark IV. It's my go-to hardware wallet of choice. Uh, they've also got a ton of other goodies, which I've accumulated as well. Tap signers, sats cards, block clocks, open dimes, and... I've now reserved my cold card Q1 as well as the SATS link, which is super interesting as well. If you want to reserve those things or pick up any of the other stuff I mentioned, head over to coinkite.com. Make sure you use code BTC Sessions for 5% off everything in the store. Now, backups are also very important when you're backing up any hardware. Uh, you're going to want to have your seed phrase kept in a form that is resistant to fire, water, corrosion, all of that stuff. And seed ore is one of the most robust and beautifully made steel backup options on the market. It's got a disc and capsule design, super easy to use, comes with a full set that gives you everything you need to secure your seed phrase, whether it's one seed phrase or two, depending on which starter set you get. And one of the benefits of seed ore is if you do need to swap out your seed, you don't need to discard an entire plate. You can actually just swap out the discs inside, which will cost you maybe 10 bucks or so and uh, super easy to do so. So be sure to check them out. Seed ore, there are links down below with the best shipping options, depending on where you're located. Nunchuck. Io has you covered with your assisted multi-sig needs with their Honey Badger option. What this is, is an assisted multi-sig that you set up on a mobile device really simply. You can use tap signers, cold cards, or any other hardware device that they list. They have a ton of options. It holds your hand through the whole setup. Once you are set up, they have one key, you have three, and you have baked in inheritance planning. And all of this is done with no KYC required. So you don't need to give up your personal information to set up and have this work for you. So if you want to check them out, links are down below. And I also have a tutorial on how the whole thing works. And finally, shout out to start9.com, your sovereign computing solution. These guys give you plug and play options for running your whole Bitcoin stack. Uh, and you can run things like Bitcoin Core, Lightning Nodes, um, mempool.space, join market. You can also host your own data like files, passwords, and photos, Nostra relays, and clients. Also, side note, they have a new deal on the Start9 server Pure, which is the high-end one that I'm running. Uh, they just dropped the price uh, by a couple hundred bucks. And actually, I now have a code that you can use, which is all caps, BTC Sessions Plus, and that will get you another 18% off all in all. If you're buying the server pure, it ends up saving you around 400 bucks, uh, which is crazy. So be sure to check them out, start9.com. And again, that code is BTC Sessions, all caps, with a plus sign at the end. Uh, anyways, shout out to Start9. You guys are killing it. Keep them coming. And uh, with that, let's dive into the tutorial. So first up, let's chat prerequisites. What are you going to need to know in order to get through this tutorial? Well, there's a few things that are uh, probably need to know 
prerequisites and there's a few things that are nice to have prerequisites. So um, first off, need to know. Well, I mean, you need to know how to do basic Bitcoin transactions. If you're starting here and you've never done a Bitcoin transaction, go back through my catalog. There's a whole bunch of videos on getting started with basic wallets. Um, now, another prerequisite that would be good is uh, how to use green wallet from Blockstream. Um, I'm going to be using that in this tutorial. And the reason I'm using that is actually because I'm going to be using uh, Liquid Network. So Liquid Network is a side chain of Bitcoin that allows you to uh, use um, assets issued on it, including stable coins. So in this instance, um, it would be a wallet that would you would require in order to receive your loan of Tether of a U.S. denominated stable coin um, Tether to that wallet. So you can do that with Liquid again, which is a side chain of Bitcoin. So uh, basically, if you are unfamiliar with how to use Liquid, I'm going to put a little playlist and it shows a whole bunch about Green Wallet, how to use Liquid, all that kind of stuff, how to swap between Bitcoin and Liquid Network and all that kind of stuff. You know, you can have uh, basically Liquid Bitcoin or you can have whatever token is denominated like a US dollar as well in the same wallet. Uh, so we'll be going through that and I'll try and explain also what I'm doing as I go through, but I'm not going to go through like the wallet setup for Blockstream Green. So if you need that, then go check out my video in the show notes down below. It'll walk you through everything. It could be done on mobile or desktop. I'll use desktop this time because we're going to be working with the HODL HODL website. And then finally, uh, I guess I'll say that if you're unfamiliar with the HODL HODL platform as a whole, I'll also link below to using their regular peer-to-peer -peer just buying Bitcoin non-KYC so that you can kind of see how that works as well. Again, that one, I, I'll say that's a nice to have prerequisite. You don't need to know that stuff because, again, if you're just using the lending platform, then yeah, you're pretty much all set. Now, in terms of um, let's, I, I kind of want to get out of the way why somebody might utilize this. Um, and there's kind of two different lines of thought. So one would be, Hey, I have Bitcoin. It's sitting here. Uh, I need cash in some form. I need like a U.S. dollar for something that I'm doing. And I don't want to sell my Bitcoin and incur like a capital gain. I don't want to sell it through an exchange and, and, you know, have that tax burden. And so what one can do is they can use their Bitcoin as collateral to borrow dollars and, you know, pay those dollars back later. Um, and so that, that would be one reason why somebody might do that. The risk associated with that is when you use Bitcoin as collateral, it is obviously a volatile asset. It can go up and down. And so if you use the collateral and it goes down a meaningful amount, you may need to add more collateral, more Bitcoin, so that your loan is actually backed by enough assets. Or if you cannot do so, then you could be liquidated, which means like, hey, your assets are getting really close to the value of the money that you were lent. And if it gets too close to that, then we're basically going to sell that Bitcoin to make sure that the lender is kept whole. So that would be a risk as well, which is why you never over leverage yourself if you're looking to utilize a loan. It's always a tiny percentage of the Bitcoin that you hold because, again, we all know Bitcoin can go up and down very quickly, unexpectedly. Now, if the Bitcoin goes up in value and you've gotten a U.S. dollar loan against it, then then you're totally fine, obviously, because your collateral is worth even more. Um so yeah, and now the other use case uh, that somebody may use is it may be a speculative play. Um, and, you know, a lot of people can can get ahead of themselves with speculation and they may say, oh, I want to use my Bitcoin to get a, a U.S. dollar loan and then I'm going to use those dollars to buy more Bitcoin. Um, that is you banking on Bitcoin going up. However, if you do that and Bitcoin goes down, you now have collateral, which is worth less, which means you may need to add more collateral. 
but the dollars that you borrowed, you also used to buy Bitcoin, which has also gone down in value, which means you need to put more and more into your collateral on the lending platform. So that is a very risky game. Some people are fine with that, but just just be very cautious because um, things can happen fast and you can get wrecked like no tomorrow if you start playing games uh, like that and you get a little too cute with it. So you've been warned. Um, I'm more, uh, uh, you know, I, I tend to lean towards the first use case. I think it's a legitimate thing to say, hey, I've got an asset here. I'd like to borrow against it for perhaps like a business use case that is actually going to generate more income for me that will then allow me to pay down the loan. I think that's a very legitimate thing to do. I just see no problem with that. Um, the speculation thing, I mean, you're all big boys and girls. You can make up your own damn minds about that. Uh, that's not a game that I like to play at this point in time, but to each their own. Either way, uh, you've all kind of hopefully gotten the gist of what this is for, why this is used. In terms of risk from the person actually borrowing, as a lender, you could be the person that actually puts up the offer and says, hey, I'm willing to lend you uh, US dollar like tether uh, in exchange for the interest rate that I'm going to charge for that. And that can actually be attractive for some people as well. And with the lend platform on HODL HODL, you've got that backstop where it will trigger a liquidation if the collateral that's backing the loan that you've given gets too low in value, it will trigger and it will liquidate and it'll give you that Bitcoin so that you have it. Um, so there's very little risk in terms of being a lender on HODL HODL. Uh, but of course, there's going to be risk in being a borrower because your collateral can fluctuate in value. And uh, you've got to be very conservative the, with the way that you treat that. At least that's my takeaway with it. Um, if you have more to add, please add them, uh, your comments and tips and tricks and warnings uh, in the show notes down below. Anyways, I know this was a, a long rambling intro, but I think it's warranted when it comes to uh, instruments like this. Uh, let's dive into Lend and take a look at how it works. Okay, so this is the main page you're going to be brought to when you go to hodlhodl.com. It will default to the, hey, I want to buy or sell Bitcoin peer to peer um, just on the main page here. Great. What we're looking at right now, though, is we're going to jump over to the lend part, which if you look at the top here, you can see hodl hodl. If you go to the right, buy, sell, and then peer to peer lending. We're going to click on that and that will take you to their lend page. You can also just head over to lend.hodlhodl.com and it'll take you straight here as well. Um, signing up is simple. All you need is an email address. That's it. There's no KYC of any form. You don't need to deal with any of that crap. You can just sign up with an email address. You're good to go. Um, now, you're going to see it look a little bit different as I'm using it here because I'm going to be using testnet. So I'm going to be using... Um, basically not real value. I'm just demoing with testnet coins, Bitcoin testnet coins, um, and liquid testnet coins. You'll see all that. I'll put some links down below if you want to experiment with testnet. But if you want to get to testnet and, and just see how the platform works without putting real value there yet, uh, you just scroll down on the main page. And uh, there is over here, you can see testnet underneath help. And that'll take you to a whole new lending.hhtestnet.com. And that allows you to experiment. None of it will be real value, but you got to get your hands on some testnet coins and everything. And uh, yeah, so if you want that, that's where it is. But otherwise, you can just use the main page. So, uh, oh, and by the way, if you're doing testnet, it is like a separate sign up so it, if your credentials from the regular lend platform don't work that's why it's a, it's a separate thing okay anyways um i'm going to log into this and then we'll check our navigation and see what's in front of us okay so here i am logged in looks pretty much exactly the same as it was before but now i can see that up top 
I have a notification bell on the top right. I can see uh, sets that say my contracts, my offers, my uh, username, and then a settings wheel as well. If I click my username, I can see a drop down of profile, dashboard, and sign out. Uh, on the main screen as well, uh, I can see an option that says create new offer. Uh, and then down below, I've got uh, two tabs here. One says to borrow and one says to lend. Now, I don't want to deal with uh, Tron. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to be dealing with, with Liquid by, by default here. Okay, So there's a drop down for various forms of uh, stable coins. Um, but nonetheless, we're, gonna, we're using the Liquid Network. Um, so anyways, uh, you can basically choose what type of uh, asset you would like to borrow. So in this case, Tether, or perhaps you want to borrow Liquid Bitcoin. Um, so those are options there. You would choose a loan amount, um, a percentage rate, and we'll go through percentage weight rates and how they how they work and then how long are you looking to borrow for anywhere between one and 12 months and there's these sliders where you can choose kind of your duration depending on how long you're looking to borrow for the second tab would be if you wanted to lend money and you know what are you looking to lend maybe you're looking to lend uh dollars and then earn interest on it um at the end of the day or perhaps you're looking to lend some liquid Bitcoin or whatever you're looking to do. Okay, so basically you've got, um, okay, what am I lending? Then how much am I looking to lend? What percentage rate would I like to earn? And over what period would I like to lend this out? And then finally down below, once you've set up the borrow or lending options, then you can hit view offers and it will give you a list of offers that are currently on the table. If none of these offers uh, fit what you're looking for and you'd like to put out your own offer there and see if somebody's going to snap it up, then you can go ahead and do that with the create offer button here. Alternatively, all of this stuff is also available in the to borrow or to lend tabs up at the very top of the screen over on the left hand side. So there is your navigation. Um, let's take a look at the to borrow and to lend screens just so we see what's in front of us when we do that. If we go to to borrow, it's going to show us a whole bunch of different offers that are currently on the table here. If you're looking to lend, then again, you choose what you want to deal with. Maybe I want to lend out again, liquid tether, or maybe I want to lend out liquid Bitcoin. And then I can see the offers there. Again, because I'm on testnet here, there's not a ton in front of me in terms of offers available because again, it's it's built for testing. Um, and again, if there weren't offers that were to my liking, I can set up my own, but this is your navigation there. So we're now gonna go through and we're gonna see what it's like to accept an existing offer. And then we're gonna see what it's like to set up our own offer. Now, just a side note, I thought worth mentioning, I'm also going to be dealing in this section with my Blockstream Green Wallet, which is on my desktop. Um, when you set it up, you'll have options to set up wallets for Bitcoin and Liquid. You can also see that I now have options for Bitcoin testnet and Liquid testnet, and that's what I'm going to be using in this in this uh, tutorial. If you want to enable those, all you need to do is go down on the bottom left to app settings and there's an option that says enable testnet. You just turn that on. You can see if I turn it off, they go away. If I turn it on, there they are again. You'll need to set up a new wallet uh, in doing so that will um, give you a seed phrase just like you normally would. You write it down, back it up, all that kind of stuff. But if I wanna log in, I just go there I type in my pin, which I've already set up, and there's my testnet wallet. You can see I already have some coins in there, and same with liquid testnet. Uh, I can log in, and there we go. And I've got some, uh, I've got some liquid Bitcoin, a bunch of liquid Bitcoin. Too bad it doesn't have value because it'd be super nice to have 31 Bitcoin. Uh, but, but nonetheless, uh, I've got some, some, it'll show up as liquid Bitcoin and then it'll show up as 
other assets and you can jump over to different assets. There's my liquid Bitcoin. There's my, I don't even know if this is tether. We'll see what it, <laughs> see what it looks like when we get some tether in here. Uh, but it's just like an, an example asset. It, it is a test asset. Okay, we'll, we'll call it a test net asset. Uh, but nonetheless, there's my wallets that I'm going to be dealing with. I've got a Bitcoin test net and a liquid test net wallet. The reason for the Bitcoin test net wallet is I'm going to uh, need to give Bitcoin as collateral. So this is where you would be using real Bitcoin to load the collateral on to HODL HODL lend. Um, and then that collateral would sit there until the loan was finished and it would come back to you. Anyways, uh, this is the wallet I'm using. I'll have links down below where you can at least see how the regular wallet works, setting up liquid and all of that, as well as links to where to get liquid Bitcoin, so on and so forth. So let's take a look at the offers page and your navigation and how you can basically look through all of the offers and see uh, what they entail without going into them directly. So um, first off, you have all of your specifications up top. So let's say I wanted to borrow Tether and I was only interested in doing it on Liquid. So I would go into Tether here and I would choose the Liquid sidechain and that would narrow it down. Again, this is testnet. There's not going to be as many things populating here, but you get the point. So I can see uh, in the offers, what you're going to see is you're going to see the user and uh, the number of deals and their rating. Of course, testnet, nobody's been rated. But if you're doing mainnet, you want to look for somebody with a good rating. People have given lots of thumbs up. OK, uh, under amount, you're going to see the amount uh, available to borrow or uh, to lend. And you're going to see the associated chain. So again, this one is between 500 and 1500 tether on liquid. Again, this one's 50 to 100 on liquid. Uh, up next, you'll see the period. How long of a borrowing window do you have? So this one is 12 months. This one is between one and 12 months, whatever you decide. Uh, up next is the interest rate and the annual interest rate. So interest rate and APR. OK, interest rate overall is what is the rate you're paying flat all the way through um, or what is the lowest rate that you would pay based on how long you're borrowing for. And then below that APR is if you were to borrow for a year, what is uh, the annual percentage rate that you would be paying? So you can see with one, the interest rate and the APR are the same because it looks like you can only borrow for 12 months. With another one, uh, interest rate from 1%, the annual percentage rate is 12%. So meaning that if you borrowed for one month, you'd be pay 1% on whatever you borrowed. If you borrowed for a full 12, then that adds up month after month and you end up paying 12% overall. So the final thing on the far right is the LTV ratio or the loan to value ratio. And what that means is depending on how much collateral you put down, how much are you able to borrow against it? So if you put in a thousand dollars worth of collateral, how much, what percentage of that can you borrow in dollars? I put a thousand bucks worth of Bitcoin. If the loan to value is 50%, 50 percent of a thousand is 500 so i'd be able to borrow 500 dollars in tether without having to sell my bitcoin and my bitcoin sits there as collateral um, with double the value of the loan that i've gotten if it's 70 percent, that means that i deposit a thousand dollars worth of bitcoin i can borrow 70 percent of that value or 700 dollars worth of tether now, when you have a higher loan to value ratio, that means the fluctuations in Bitcoin can trigger the need to add more collateral if the price of Bitcoin goes down. Um, and you need to be aware of that because the higher the loan to value ratio, the more risk there is of liquidation of a forced selling of your Bitcoin in order to cover the cost of the loan. So keep that in mind as you're looking. You can see there it varies here. There's a couple different ones and you can see LTV of 70. It gives a little uh, note that it is higher risk. So that's how you uh, view. You can even further whittle things down by choosing a loan term with the sliders here. You can choose an APR and slide it back and forth. You can choose a 
LTV ratio, or you can just clear all and then browse whatever there is blanket across everything. So that is how you use the browsing function, uh, which can be found again at the top from the two borrow and the two lend fields, and it will all be listed for you there. Okay, so let's see what it's like to uh, accept a pre-made offer that is um, sitting here on Lend at HODL HODL. So here is an example of an offer that I found and, and perhaps, um, perhaps I am interested in boring this. And so this is a, a quick demo here. I see an offer to basically borrow between 50 and $100 uh, USDT on liquid and you can see uh, it's listed as liquid down here the period is anywhere from 1 to 12 months the interest rate depending on the length of time could be between 1 and 12 percent the annual percentage rate is 12 percent so meaning if I take the offer then the maximum I'm gonna pay is 12 percent on that if I take it for one month then of course I'm only going to be paying the 1%. But it's important that you pay attention again to the interest rate and how it's offered. The loan to value is 70%. So um, that means that for the amount of collateral that I add in, because you have to add collateral in order to uh, receive a loan, I will be able to get 70% of that value lent to me in Tether. Okay, so I'm, uh, let's say I put 100 bucks worth of Bitcoin as collateral. Well, I can borrow $70 worth of Tether. Okay, so um, I'm going to go ahead with this. And let's see, just to make the numbers nice and easy and round, I'll say I'm borrowing $100 of Tether. And maybe we'll just do it for, we'll do it for one month. So because the APR is 12%, then it's going to be only 1% for the single month. And again, pay attention whether or not it uh, is just a flat interest rate or whether it's an APR, which then gets divided by how long you're actually taking the loan for. So uh, I can see here borrowing $100 for a single month, which means the interest that I'm going to be paying is a single dollar. So the amount to be repaid is right here. It will be 101 tether, $101. Okay. So first I need a payment address. Where am I going to be receiving this money? So I'm going to jump over to my green wallet here. And again, I'm doing this on testnet, but if you were doing this for real, you would just be using a regular uh, liquid wallet. So I'm going to go to my liquid testnet wallet. I'm just going to open it up with my pin that I previously set up. Okay. And all I need is a receiving address. Anybody who hasn't dealt with uh, liquid before, basically your receiving addresses for... Um, for liquid Bitcoin and for other types of assets are all the same. Okay. So you don't need a different one. So I'm just going to hit receive and I'm just going to give this address a copy. I'm going to jump back and I'm going to paste that in here to my payment address. Now I'm going to need to deposit collateral. Again, I'm using testnet for this, but I need a receiving address, a Bitcoin address, an on-chain Bitcoin address. And this would be where my collateral goes back to after the conclusion of the contract. So, you know, I load up X amount of, of Bitcoin here, um, and then I uh, will receive it back at the end of the contract. So again, I'm going to go over here and I have a Bitcoin testnet wallet. So I'll log into that one. And once again, I'm going to get a receiving address. I'll copy it. And I'll paste it in saying, hey, when the contract's done, send my Bitcoin here. Okay, so now says, would you like to accept the borrow contract for 100 USDT? And again, all the summary is here. APR is 12%. The origination, 1%. 
and a transaction fee. So origina- origination fees uh, are 1 to 1.5% of the loan amount, depending on the contract period. The fee is included in the collateral amount to be locked in the multi-sig escrow by the borrower. So I can see that that fee there is going to be about $1.16. Um, transaction fee is included there. Collateral amount to be deposited. So it tells me that I need to deposit 0.00510656 Bitcoin, which is around $145 worth of Bitcoin. All right. So I'm going to hit the accept borrow contract. It's going to take me to the next screen. So once I get into the contract screen and it says, hey, contract to borrow, here's all of the summary of the contract, all of the stuff we just went over. Um, There will be detailed uh, instructions down below of what to do. Um, And then off to the right here, you'll see there's a little chat where you can actually chat with the person that has made the contract in case there's any confusion around what needs to be done. Um, I found that people are, are quite helpful on the platform if, if you need some hand holding, especially the first couple of times. OK, so the first thing I need to do is I need to create a payment password and this password pertains to this particular contract. So I'm just going to do that here. Um, so I need to. Uh, put in the password for this contract that I would like to have it as and re-enter it. And then I need to put in the password for my HODL HODL account to finalize it. And once I've got that information plugged in, I'm going to hit create. Okay, so now the notification to accept this offer will go to uh, the individual that set up the contract and this will show as pending until which time the contract has been accepted by the other individual and we'll come back when we see that happen. Okay, so I have now had the person on the other end of the contract accept it. You can see there's some uh, messages here populating in the chat box and everything. And now uh, the contract is updated to say depositing. There's a little notification up top. And uh, it says that I need to send down to the bottom this. And when in doubt, take a look at the bottom of the contract. It'll tell you what is happening next. So it says uh, I need to deposit within the next 12 hours. So I got a pretty big window here. Uh, I need to send 0.005 some odd Bitcoin to this escrow address, which is, again, I'm on testnet, but Nonetheless, all of the information is the same. So I'm going to go do that. So I'm going to first, I'll copy this address. I'll jump over to my wallet. And again, this is, it will be on-chain Bitcoin. I'm dealing with testnet, but uh, same exact uh, method, but you'd be using on-chain Bitcoin for this. Okay, so I'm in my wallet. I'm going to hit send. Okay, I'm going to paste in that address. And then I need the amount. I will copy that. Okay. And my network fee, 1.01. All right. So everything looks good here. I've got the address put in. I'm sending a regular testnet coins. Um, and then I'm, I put in my amount, 0.005. I just copied it from the contract. I can hit review. It says, hey, here's what you're doing. And you're going to go ahead and you're going to hit send. So that is sent off. Um, I'll copy that transaction ID just in case. Um, And then I can go back to the contract. And there we go. Okay, so it says next, check for transaction confirmations in. And then it has a countdown. So again, of course, this is testnet. Um, It's going to keep on checking back and forth. So this one, if it was Bitcoin, on average, every 10 minutes, there's a confirmation. Uh, but it says that there's one confirmation required. The contract will be transferred to the payment stage. Uh, when the timer expires, the lender can cancel the contract. So um, I'm basically just waiting for a confirmation to go through. And then I am uh, waiting to receive my loan. All right. So I now have a notification that says the status of the contract has changed to payment. So that means that I have a confirmation on my collateral now uh, getting there. 
And so now it says uh, that I'm in the process of receiving my funds to my wallet. So I'm in the process of receiving my loan. So at this point, all I have to do is just wait for the tether to land in my wallet and then I can do with it as I see fit. And I just have to repay that loan before the end of the contract. So that's that. Once the payment has been sent by uh, the individual in question, um, what you'll see is a couple things. Uh, first off, the payment link. Um, you can see it up here. It says link to payment transaction. That allows you to actually go in and see on a block explorer the, the transaction that has taken place. Um, and that should automatically confirm on its own. Um, and then down below, there's a confirm payment received button and uh, and you can also hit that. Now, um, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to hit that and then it's going to say, hey, uh, I need my two factor authentication code, which would have been set up during uh, during your initial account setup. Basically, uh, Google Authenticator or whatever you prefer to use for that. So I'm just going to plunk in my code now and hit confirm. Okay, and then I need to put the payment password that I set up for this contract. And confirm. So it now says that the status of the contract has changed to in progress. So let's see what we've got in front of us here. Um, and we can see the contract summary as normal. We see the repayment information. Um, and this is where we would be sending to um, repay our loan, you'll get an address. Um, it says this address is used to repay the loan amount in the associated currency. Okay, so eventually, um, at the end of the loan, I'd be sending Tether 101 uh, USDT to the address listed below here. Um, I can see the collateral, uh, the release address, which is what I provided. So the collateral will go back to me, assuming nothing goes awry and there's not a huge crash in the price of Bitcoin and don't need to add collateral. Um, and then you can also send more funds to escrow if there is a drop in the price, if that needs to happen. Uh, and then it says, congratulations, your contract is now in progress. Uh, please remember to repay the loan on time. You may repay your loan early or with multiple payments so you can chip away at the amount that you've borrowed over time. Uh, please also control your LTV ratio or your loan to value ratio. If this falls lower than 90%, so right now it's at 70, which is again, um, not as much leeway. Uh, your collateral will be liquidated and the amount of 0 0.00354231 Bitcoin will be transferred to the lender. Thank you. So you do have to pay attention to these things. You will get warnings, uh, but it they're pretty tight margins when you've got a 70% loan to value. If it's 50 or 30, then it's not as worrisome, but still make sure you are aware of that. And, um, and that's pretty much it. So you would then, of course, you, uh, you know, I, I confirmed everything here, uh, and you know, it, it was a test transaction. So, um, I basically check my wallet. Did that go through? Is it there? Great. I got it. Yes. Then I can confirm. So that's it. Um, we basically chose an offer, uh, put in collateral and hit a refund address for our collateral and then an address that uh, we're supposed to receive the loan to. And the person on the other side of it uh, did all of the rest. And we just had to basically follow the steps. Again, in general, when in doubt, look at the bottom of the contract to see the next step that you need to do. And you should be just fine. And when in doubt, there's also a little chat box on the right hand side where you can converse with the individual you're dealing with. So let's quickly cover loan repayment. Uh, again, whether you chip away at it uh, with little pieces of payments or whether you pay the entire thing off at once, as long as it's before the end of the contract, then you should be good. So I'm here on the main page. The way I get back to the contract in question is I go up to the top and it says my contracts. I'm going to click on that. 
Uh, this shows any contracts that are in some stage. And I can see the one in question right here that says in progress. I'm going to say view contract. And that takes us back to the page that we were on when we previously set it up. If I go down to the bottom, there's a button that says make repayment. So I'm going to click that. And then it says provide transaction ID uh, or link to a block explorer. So obviously I would have to have made the actual payment beforehand. Now, as I alluded to before in the previous section, uh, I need to use the payment address that is here. Now, this is again, just a, a, a fake string that was put in for testing purposes, but I would basically copy this and then I would send the amount that I need to send from my wallet, okay? So 101 USDT. So for instance, I would go ahead, I'd go to my uh, liquid testnet. Okay, I'm gonna open up my wallet here. And again, I'm kind of doing some stuff in the background here to make this flow properly. So this, just so you know, I'm doing a self transfer here just as a test, uh, but it would look a little bit different. Um, you know, obviously you'd be pasting in the correct address from the contract. So uh, here in my liquid testnet wallet, I'm going to hit send. Um, I would ch first choose the address that I'm sending to. Again, that would be located here in the repayment information. Uh, but for me right now, I'm actually just going to receive to one of my own addresses. Okay. Uh, so anyways, back to the send screen. You paste in the correct address for the contract. Then you're going to choose the asset you need to send. And remember, we're dealing with liquid tether. Now, I'm going to do the drop down and you would see liquid tether in here. I'm just sending a, a, a fake asset here. So I'm just going to choose this. And then I would send the amount that I'm supposed to send 101 tether. Again, in this instance, I'm just doing a pretend amount. So five uh, units of whatever this is. And then you would set your fee and liquid. The fees are basically, you know, fractions of a sat per byte right now. So I'm going to hit review. Hey, you're sending this much of this asset to this address. Does that look right? I'm going to say yes, and I'm going to hit send. So that gets sent off. That would be sent off back to the contract there. So I could say, oh, yes, I did do my payment. Great. Now what I would need to do in the contract is go down to that button we saw before, make repayment. And then I would need to provide the transaction ID or a link to a block explorer. So in my wallet, hey, here's that transaction. I would just copy that transaction ID and I would paste it in here and hit submit. So I'm gonna do that now. Now it's important to note that when you're using a liquid, transactions are confidential. So you need a non-confidential link. Uh, and so you can basically do that here when clicking on a transaction. So again, I'll click on this transaction here, um, you can say copy unblinded link or copy unblinding data. Either one of those will work. So I'll just do the link and then I'll jump back and I will paste in that link here and I'm going to hit submit. Once everything is confirmed, you'll get a notification in the top right that says contract has been completed. Uh, if you overlook everything here, uh, it will show contract to borrow. It will list as completed up top. Um, you can show the escrow data. You can vote for your counterparty uh, up and down. And then again, full contract summary here, interest you paid, all that stuff. Repayment transactions, that was the transaction sent to repay the loan. Um, and then contract completed, thank you for doing business. And then your refund button down at the bottom. Really quick, let's take a look at the escrow data. Hey, um, you can see the escrow address, the witness script, all of that. You can download that data if you like. And then you can also hit your refund button. And this requires your two-factor authentication, which I shall grab right now. Hit confirm. And then uh, it says, hey, refund from escrow. This is getting your deposited Bitcoin back to your own wallet. Uh, so I put in the payment password for this contract and confirm. All right. And so now at the bottom, contract completed. Thank you for doing business with us. Uh, and 
There's no more additional things to do here. I should see my escrow pop back up in my wallet now. And jumping back to green wallet, we can see an unconfirmed transaction and it is for 500,000, 505,000 sats. Uh, so yeah, there we go. Our escrow transaction, our escrow funds returns back to us. Contract complete, repaid loan, all of that, everything is all finished. So let's say that none of the offers that you search through on Lend are to your liking. And so you'd like to set up your own offer for what you would like to lend or borrow. Well, just from the main page here, you can click on create new offer. This will take you to this page and we're going to go through everything here and uh, get it all set. So what do you want to do? Do you want to borrow or do you want to lend? Well, in this instance, I'm going to say, hey, I would like to lend something in order to earn some interest on on my coins. OK, so I'm going to stay on the I want to lend tab here. It's already selected. Now it says, how much would you like to lend? You can either do a fixed amount saying I want to lend this lump sum and only this lump sum or you can say a range. How, is it going to be between, I'm willing to lend between this amount and this amount, whatever the person wants. Okay, so let's do a range just so we see what that looks like. Um, we also need to choose what are we lending? Well, I'm again, let's get away from Ethereum. Uh, so we're going to do liquid tether. Okay, and maybe I want to lend somebody anywhere from 500 to... $1,500 worth of tether. Okay, great. How long am I looking to lend for? And so this can vary. You can set a range or you can just set a flat amount. So let's say I just wanted to lend for a full year and that was it. Well, so you can say, if you want to borrow this money, then you're going to have it for a year and then you have to pay it back. Or I can say, I'm okay with lending as long as as short as six months up to 12 months. Okay. Um, so first I'm going to set this to just 12 months so that we can see how the interest rate stuff works here as well. Okay. So this is, I'm willing to lend between 500 and 1500 bucks worth of tether on liquid network for a flat loan term of 12 months. Okay, great. Interest rate. So interest rate is set for the whole loan term, whereas annual percentage rate is the total annual cost of the contract. So here, if I said I wanted to make 10%, well, um, it says, hey, you'll get interest of anywhere from 50 to $150, depending on the amount that the person wants to borrow. Cool. Cool. What if I change this to annual, actually, let's, let's do this. Let's now change the term of the loan in terms of length, okay? So if I drag this and I start to say, well, it could be longer and longer. The interest rate is the same regardless of how long somebody is borrowing for, but they could borrow for six months up to 12 months. And so the interest rate the annual percentage rate is different. So that means like, hey, if you borrowed for six months and you're paying 10% interest over that six months, then technically speaking, that interest rate, the APR, the annual percentage rate of that would be 20%. It would be double. Um, but the person's only borrowing for six months. Basically, we've said you're paying 10% no matter how long you borrow for. Okay. So I mean, it would make sense for that person to probably just borrow it for the 12, full 12 months. But this is where you can kind of play around. You can set just a uh, flat interest rate or you can set an annual percentage rate. And so if I want the annual percentage rate to be 10%, that means that the total interest rate 
if somebody goes for six months only, they're only going to pay half of that, 5%. So it actually, depending on the length of time that they borrow for, the total interest that they pay ranges. And so you can see that depending on the amount the person borrows and the length of time that they borrow, I'm going to make between 25 and 150 bucks. So you can play around with this however you want. Um, I've seen people do a mix of all kinds of different settings. Let's just keep it simple for right now. I'm going to say I'm willing to borrow. Uh, I'm willing to lend for 12 months, and I'm just going to say uh, in this case the interest rate and the annual percentage rate are the same thing, right? If they're set to 10, it's just 10, right? It's it's the same. It doesn't matter which one of these I choose, okay? Now, loan to value ratio. Let's talk about what that is. How much collateral is required for the person to deposit in order to get this loan? Okay, well, loan to value, that means... How much is loaned versus the value uh, of the collateral? So if it's 50%, that means that if somebody borrowed, say, $1,000, they would need to put $2,000 of collateral in the form of Bitcoin onto this platform. And so the, the, the collateral that they put there is going to sit there until the end of the loan. And so that's kind of my insurance that they're not going to run off with the thousand bucks that I just lent them. So that is sitting there. And if the value of that, that $2,000 worth of Bitcoin begins to go down and down and it gets dangerously close to only being worth what I lent them, it will trigger a liquidation and I will get that Bitcoin so that I'm sure that I get paid for the loan. Uh, and so you can set the loan to value ratio and the way it works is the higher the loan to value, the higher the risk. What that means is if I put it at 70%, that means uh, 70% of the value of the loan um, or sorry, the loan that I'm giving out is 70% of the value of the collateral. So that Bitcoin needs to fall much less to get close to that trigger rate where it will sell off their coins and give them to me. Whereas the other end of the spectrum, 30%, that means if somebody wants to borrow uh, $1,000, they got to put more collateral. They've got to put like $5,500 worth of collateral there which also gives them a ton of leeway so that Bitcoin's price can drop a lot and they're not going to have to add more collateral and they're not going to have to, you know, be liquidated. So this is kind of up to your own discretion. 50% obviously is the middle ground there. Um, but some people like to be more conservative and some people don't mind having higher risk. Um, but just know that you as a you as a lender still have a you know the insurance there of oh you know they're gonna sell the coins and give them to you um but yeah just just be aware that uh there's different trade-offs with each one and it may be more attractive to certain people depending on what you choose here i'm just going to go middle of the road okay uh this little toggle switch enable offer after creation your order will be active and available to other users disable to save as a draft so you can set up a draft and just save it um, you can also make the offer private so you can share it specifically with an individual if you've spoken with somebody outside of the platform and said hey we'll do it through this so it's mediated um, but here's here's the link now uh, we're not done here because there's stuff over to the side hey when are you available because you need to be able to respond to people picking up your offer so you can check for 24 hour access or you can set your hours. Well, I'm usually around my computer between 9 a.m. and, you know, we'll say 5 p.m. 1700. OK, so, yeah, so I'm usually around my computer then. So I'll set those as the hours. You can also set work days only. So uh, Monday to Friday, maybe you're not around the weekends. You don't want to be monitoring this stuff then. 
Okay. You can add any additional comments, requests, anything that you like in here. Um, I'm not going to put anything right now. And so it says, hey, here's what you've set up. You're willing to lend between $500 and $1,500 worth of Tether on Liquid. Uh, the loan term is just 12 months flat. Um, it could be a range, but we haven't set that. The APR or the interest rate is 10%. And because it's flat, the person is just going to pay 10%. And then depending on the amount that they borrow, we will make between 50 and 100 bucks, 150 bucks by the end of the term. So now that we've set up everything we want, that looks good. I can hit create offer to lend. And that is now listed on HODL HODL. When somebody, uh, when somebody goes and accepts that offer, then I will uh, receive a notification here. Uh, you can also set it so that you will receive emails. And um, if somebody does, then it will give step-by-step -step instructions of you, uh, to you rather, um, where to send the money when the collateral has been collected. Now, this is, of course, just one offer that I've made. Uh, if you want to see your offers from any place, so if I jump back to the main screen here, if I go to my offers, I can now see the offers that I have put up. So there's the one that I just made. And here's another one that I was testing the other day where I went to lend uh, liquid Bitcoin 0 0.01. So um, yeah, you can basically have multiple offers on the go at the same time if you want to do so. And this is just for lending. Of course, you could do the opposite end of the spectrum where you're putting up an offer saying, I would like to borrow. I'm wondering if somebody would like to lend to me and a l potential lender can go through and say, sure, I'll take that offer. Here's whatever you're looking to borrow. And I'm going to charge the interest rate that you've set forth because it seems fair. So you can set up either way. So just some final thoughts here. A um, couple things. Number one, again, once you get on the platform and you start using it, uh, I was using Testnet. And so there's certain things that, you know, I kind of filled in the gaps as, as I, I made an example of these contracts. But just know that anything that I've done in Testnet would be effectively the same if you're using regular Bitcoin transactions and regular liquid transactions. As I said before, uh, references for video tutorials in and around Blockstream Green, which I was using over the course of this tutorial, as well as how to utilize liquid and uh, how to get liquid Bitcoin, so on and so forth. All of those links will be in the show notes down below. Uh, and there's one other thing that I wanted to mention um, in that contract that I did after I was wrapping it up uh, and I was getting my escrow back, there was a section that said uh, show escrow data and it allow you to, allowed you to download it. Um, basically, HODL HODL has a, uh, a doomsday scenario uh, protocol that allows you to utilize the information to still get back your escrow money if they were to ever not exist anymore. And so that data, you can download it, you can keep it. And then uh, if something happens to them, then, hey, you still have a protocol in which you can get back your collateral. So there's even less risk to deal with. Um, in terms of any other things I'll mention, um, you know, I, I would just recommend um, poking around, trying different uh, partners um, when you're finding contracts, paying attention to ratings and number of contracts that people have uh, previously had. It's kind of like an eBay style rating system. So somebody who's done a lot of contracts and has a lot of positive feedback, um, you can be more uh, secure in knowing that they'll be responsive and easy to work with, so on and so forth. Um, and then in terms of the contracts themselves, as you're going through, the same thing applies to when you've set up your own contract or own offer and are waiting for somebody to respond to them as when I did the contract that I just accepted from the pre-listed ones. Um, it's basically you get into that contract and all of your next steps are always at the bottom of the contract. There'll always be a button or it'll tell you what's in the process of happening. So just always look at the bottom of the contract and it leads you through everything. And when in doubt, you've got a chat off to the side to confer with the individual as well. 
On top of that, yes, you're getting notifications live in the browser, but if you happen to be away from the browser, you'll also be getting email notifications for every update to a contract or somebody accepting a contract or whatever it may be. So you're not going to be in the dark if you are away from the site momentarily. Just, I would say, just try to be present um, when there's a contract in the midst of happening, okay? Other than that, uh, I think it pretty much leads you through everything. If you have experiences or questions or anything like that, drop them down below and feel free to uh, pop into other people's questions and comments. Uh, and then Hoddle Hoddle also has uh, their own ways of contacting them. Um, they do have a Telegram and and uh, they respond to stuff on Twitter and all that kind of stuff. So make sure you check them out there as well. I hope this has been helpful. Let me know about your experiences and your thoughts in the comments down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, please do hit like, subscribe, share, all those things. They help a ton getting this content in front of more eyeballs. If you do want to check out Hoddle Hoddle, again, lend.hoddlehoddle.com. There's a link in the show notes down below and you can click that and uh, give it a go there and let me know your thoughts. You can help out the show in another way by hitting the previously mentioned sponsors down below, CoinKite, Cedar, Nunchuck, and Start9. And if you really liked what you saw, you can always hit me up at my website, BTC Session. You'll find a ton of free information there. But if you need some additional handholding in your Bitcoin journey, you need some one-on-one -on -one sessions to sort through self-custody, security, privacy, whatever it may be, you can book me for one-on-ones at my website there. With that, I am out. Have yourselves a wonderful day or evening, wherever you may be. I'll see you guys next time for your daily session. Bitcoin.